To most efficiently use catalogs in Capture One, it's important to understand how they manage and work with files. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a new catalog and title it test. I'm going to place it in my pictures folder. That's where it's going to give us the best performance. Uh, pictures folder on my local hard drive. I'm going to click OK. Now, unlike with a session, a catalog requires importing. You can't use a catalog like a file browser like you can in a session that we talked about in our last video. So I've got to import images, so I'll make use of this giant import images button in the middle of the screen. Uh, I'm going to navigate to import from, select choose, and then I'm going to grab a uh, folder that I know has images. I'll be sure to click include subfolders. And uh, I see all of these images populate, uh, all of these images are about to be brought into this catalog, but I want them to stay where they are on the hard drive. I like where they are, they're in a, uh, in a system that makes sense to me. And so in the import to section, I'm simply going to leave it as add to catalog. I also have the option to copy into catalog, which means that not only will these files be duplicated from where they are now, but a copy of them is actually going to be stored within the catalog database. Now that might be okay for a couple things short term, but in terms of anything long term, the catalog database file is going to start you know, getting larger and larger and larger the more raw files that you put inside of it. And so very quickly, the internal drive that you're storing the catalog database on is going to just not going to be able to open the catalog anymore. And so it's always best to avoid copying into catalog, or if you do copy into catalog, just make sure that it's short term. If you're copying from an SD card or something like that, you're going to use the copy to folder, and then you're going to place those files wherever you would like them to be on an external hard drive or on your local drive. Doesn't matter as long as you know where they are and there's space for them. For these, I'm going to leave them as, uh, I'm going to simply leave add to catalog checked in the import to section, and uh, I'll leave collection here re as recent imports only. I'm going to leave that for now. That'll like, make a lot more sense in just a moment. I'm going to pick all of these images and I'm going to import all of them. So immediately Capture One is going to start populating the browser with the images that we've just added to the catalog. All we've done at this point, we haven't copied any files anywhere and we're simply pointing the Capture One catalog to uh, where those files are on our hard drive. So now if we look at recent imports here, we can see that on June 15th, 2023 at 425 p.m., uh, we imported 24 images. That's what just happened. Now, this recent import section is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, every import event that we see is going to be listed here up to a limit. That's not always going to be the case. I have had people in the past uh, only access their images using the recent imports button. Please don't do that. This is temporary so that you can go further into the catalog and start organizing your images on a deeper level. Recent captures real quick is simply uh, in reference to tethering. So you can tether while uh, you are working in a catalog, but I highly recommend sessions for tethering. They're just a lot more powerful. Uh, and a lot more flexible. So if you're interested in sessions, please do watch the last video that I mentioned last week where I talked about tethering and why sessions are good at it. So below recent captures and trash, we see user collections. This is gonna be the section of Capture One where we start getting into the organizational methods that we really need to use in order to use catalogs effectively. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click the plus button next to user collections and I'm going to create an album. An album in Capture One is the only, in a Capture One catalog at least, is the only organizational tool which will actually hold images. Knowing that, I'm going to title my first album Food. Okay, and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to leave these checkboxes uh, unchecked for now. So now we have a new album that says Food. Uh, we have no images inside of it yet, so I'm going to go to my recent imports uh, and select all of the uh, food images that I just imported. Hold down shift, click down the line, drag them over into food. Uh, now we see that food has 12 images inside of it. Now nothing has been duplicated on the hard drive. Every organizational tool the catalog gives you is virtual, meaning that your files exist as a single copy where they, uh, wherever they were stored originally, but then you can access them in any number of ways, either through multiple albums, smart albums, uh, and then those can then be put into groups and projects in any number of ways. So uh, we'll get into that now. 
so we have a food album. Uh, there's another set of images in this list, so I'm going to create another album, and I'm going to title it uh, Night Images. Just say Night. Click OK. So I'll go back to my recent imports where I imported both sets of these images at the same time. Go down to the Night Images, grab them, click, hold down Shift, and click at the end drag all of them over into the night album. So now we have uh, two albums with images inside of them, night and food. Uh, I did not plan for them to each have 12 images, but here we are. So if we look at uh, food and the night album, uh, obviously Capture One's going to display the contents of those albums, but we can go a step further in our organization. So Capture One catalogs and sessions give you access to both albums as well as smart albums. Smart albums also contain images, but they get those images in a slightly different way. Uh, a second ago, we manually dragged these images from the browser and dropped them into the album. But this time, uh, we're going to use a smart album. All a smart album is is a constant search looking for images that match the criteria that you assign to that smart album. So let's make one now. I'm going to click the plus button again next to user collections, and I'm going to select smart album. So I'll title this smart album five star red. I wonder what kinds of images I'm going to be searching for with the Smart Album. So I'm going to, in my search criteria, I'm going to click the plus button and I'm going to select color tag is red. And I'll also hit the plus button again for another set of parameters that I will choose uh, rating is greater than or equal to one star. So. This smart album is going to look across every image in the catalog and it's going to find the images that have at least, actually I'll say at least three stars and also has a color tag of red. Now you can have any sort of uh, organizational or, or select picking method of your choice. Uh, this is simply an example. So color tag is red and the rating has to be greater than three stars. So I'll click OK. And I'll rename this smart album uh, instead of five star red, I'll rename this album three star red. Okay, so we have a three star red album that is looking across the entire catalog for images that are at least three stars and also have a color tag of red. And we immediately see that populate on the right hand side. Now all of these images happen to be in the food album. So if I went into my night album and I made a couple of selects here, I'm gonna make this image red and I'm gonna also star it as three. We also, if we come back to three star red now, we see that that image has also populated in the smart album. So that's what's happening, is the smart album is constantly searching the entire catalog database for images that satisfy those criteria. So you can be uh, really uh, very picky with how you make these smart albums. And you saw a moment ago how many uh, search terms there really are. It's actually quite impressive. Almost any piece of metadata you can use to search, whether it's the camera's serial number, model, or focal length, <laughs> any number of things you can use as a smart album or to filter in a different way that I'll probably talk about in another video. So I'm going to go through in the night album and I'm going to make a, a, a couple more selects. I'll make that one three star red and I'll make this one a four star red. It's nice that the smart album is looking across the entire catalog, but you know, if I'm looking for my night images alone, I don't necessarily care how many three star red images I have in my food album. So this is where projects come in. So what a project is going to do is it's going to basically tell Capture One and any smart album inside of it to only look within that project. Instead of looking across the entire catalog, which may contain thousands of images, you can create a project and by placing a smart album inside of it, it will only search for albums and images within that project. So let's do that now. I'm going to go to user collections. I'm going to click my plus icon and I'm going to select project. I'm going to name this project cuisine because I'm fancy and I'll click okay. So inside of my food album, which is a pretty large album name, food, it's very general. Uh, but that's okay, we might change that in a minute. But for now, I'm gonna grab food and put it into cuisine. I'm also going to create another project and I'm going to title it street. Click okay. And I'm gonna drag my night album into street. Now we have two projects, each containing an album with images. 
this three star red album or this three star red smart album is still looking across all images within the catalog because it's outside of these projects but when I place this smart album inside of let's say my street project the uh, browsed images are going to change because uh, this smart album is now only looking inside of the street project if I were to move the smart album to the cuisine project now it's going to only be searching within the cuisine project see how that works now let's assume for a second that we shot these images for a specific client or for one specific project. Well, now we can start thinking about groups. Groups is the highest level of organization that Capture One catalogs give us and allow for albums, smart albums, as well as projects to be placed inside of them. So let's make one of those now. So I'll make a new group by going next to user collections, selecting group, and I'll say, I'll title this group client A. Now I'll click OK. Now, because I was highlighted on three star red, that smart album, uh, that smart album is contained within the cuisine project. And this group now exists inside this cuisine project as well. But I don't want that. I want this group to be outside of both cu cuisine and street uh, projects. So I'm going to drag it outside of it. So now we have three distinct top level uh, levels of organization. So if we wanted to now, I can drag both of these into client A. And so now inside of client A, we see that this Chevron has been expanded and we see cuisine and street. We can expand those further. Now you can really start to see how deep you can go within Capture One. Uh, all of these organizational methods, again, are completely virtual, and they can also exist all next to each other. There's not, you don't have to use this kind of nesting if you don't want to, uh, but a Capture One catalog is really designed for that nesting to be used so that you can more adequately and more efficiently uh, go through, organize, and search within your images. So if you can imagine using a single catalog, you might create uh, groups based off of genre, food, editorial, portrait, so on. You could also use multiple catalogs for those things, and specifically for the kinds of uh, genres that don't overlap. So myself personally, I have a landscape catalog, a food catalog, and an editorial catalog. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use a, a Capture One catalog. There's no right or wrong way, so long as you know where your files are outside of Capture One. So now if we look underneath user collections, we see this folders tool here. So uh, if you watched the last uh, Capture One Sessions video, you might think that this folders uh, tool looks pretty similar to the system folders tool in a session, but it works very differently. The folders tool in this case, if we were to expand Macintosh HD, users, clean video, here we go. So this hierarchy is essentially every, it's showing every image that's associated with the catalog and it's showing where in the operating system those files actually live. So we can see that I have two sets of images that I imported from earlier. They're both within the video folder inside of the, my clean user. Notice though that there are no other folders associated with the catalog. It's only showing us the folder hierarchy of the images that have been imported into the catalog. So again, unlike a session, a catalog can't be used as a file browser. This tool is still useful, particularly for um, reconnecting offline images. So let's say for example that, uh, look at one of my night images. So if I right click uh, this thumbnail and select show in finder, we're gonna see the actual location of this physical raw file. Uh, I'm gonna take this file and I'm gonna drag it outside of its containing folder. Very quickly, we're gonna see Capture One populate an offline badge. What that means is the, the path that this catalog uses to get to this particular image is now broken. As soon as I bring that raw file back into Foggy Evening, boom, we see that offline badge go away. It's easy to move files around uh, between folders if we're inside of Capture One and the folders that we're moving our files to are already connected to the catalog. So let's say for example that we, for some reason, wanted to move one of these files from the foggy evening folder into the food folder. And that's gonna literally move the file on the hard drive. If we wanted to do that, all we had to do is to grab the thumbnail, drag it over into the food folder here. Now Capture One's gonna give me a warning sign that says, hey, I'm actually moving images. This file's physically being moved from one folder to another. 
Uh, I'm okay with that, so I will click move. And now we see a number change here. So in foggy evening, there was 12, now there's 11 images. Now in food, there was 12, now there's 13. If I click on the food folder, we see all of the containing images. And then we also see the night image that we just dragged in there. If I wanna put it back within Capture One, all I have to do is do it this way. I'll click move again, and now we're back to our even correct number of images within each folder. Sometimes you just have to move files around outside of Capture One through Finder. So let's do that now. Let's say, for example, I'm gonna to go to Finder, and I'm gonna grab the uh, food folder, and I'm just gonna drag it into the pictures folder instead. Well, suddenly, that's going to uh, show in Capture One as all of these images being offline because again, the uh, file path, the folder path that the Capture One catalog was using to access these files is now broken. When it looks inside the video folder, it doesn't see anything there. So uh, I have to reestablish that organization. So I could right click all of these images and select locate one at a time or <laughs> I could do something much faster and I can go over into my folders tool, right click the food folder and select locate there. So instead of locating each individual image, I'm going to instead locate the containing folder and point capture one to where it is now since I moved it outside of capture one just a moment ago. So again, right click the uh, missing folder and select locate. Uh, I know that these uh, images were moved to the pictures folder. Here is the food folder, click open. Now we see that there is a new folder uh, listed inside of the hierarchy here that contains food, which is pictures. So I've moved food into the pictures folder. Now we see the pictures folder is also associated with uh, the catalog. If I wanted to, I could also grab the foggy evening folder here drag it over into pictures. It'll ask me if I want to do that for sure. I will say move. And now both foggy evening and food folders are within the pictures folder and the video folder uh, is now no longer associated with the catalog because it no longer has any images inside of it. Uh, so you can see how that works by having, uh, if an entire folder is moved, it's fairly easy to locate that folder, find its new location and point Capture One directly to it. But if you can avoid it and move images within Capture One, it's always best to do it that way so that you never have an offline catalog. So hopefully this has helped clear up some of the organizational tools that Capture One catalogs provide. I've seen a lot of people use catalogs like Sessions and I've also seen people use catalogs um, in a way that isn't really getting the most out of the catalog itself. And I think a lot of that is just not knowing how the groups, projects, and albums, as well as smart albums work together. And in using them in this way, it's you know actually quite useful and you can search and have quick access to potentially thousands of images or however many images are in your catalog. So very useful um, and especially useful when working with sessions and catalogs together, which is what I'm gonna talk about next week. If you like this video, please do actually like it on the computer and subscribe if you like uh, more of these tutorials as well as to see how I go out and make images in the landscape myself. Also hit that bell notification so that you can be notified when I upload another video. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Hopefully this was helpful. We'll see you on the next one.